Chapter Eight of Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave, written by himself, by Frederick Douglass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jesse Zuba. Chapter Eight. In a very short time after I went to live at Baltimore, my old master's youngest son Richard died, and in about three years and six months after his death my old master captain anthony died leaving only his son andrew and daughter lucretia to share his estate he died while on a visit to see his daughter at hillsborough cut off thus unexpectedly he left no will as to the disposal of his property it was therefore necessary to have a valuation of the property that it might be equally divided between mrs lucretia and master andrew i was immediately sent for to be valued with the other property here again my feelings rose up in detestation of slavery i had now a new conception of my degraded condition prior to this i had become if not insensible to my lot at least partly so i left baltimore with a young heart overborne with sadness and a soul full of apprehension i took passage from captain rowe in the schooner wildcat and after a sail of about twenty-four hours i found myself near the place of my birth i had now been absent from it almost if not quite five years i however remembered the place very well i was only about five years old when i left it to go and live with my old master on colonel lloyd's plantation so that i was now between ten and eleven years old we were all ranked together at the valuation men and women old and young married and single were ranked with horses sheep and swine there were horses and men cattle and women pigs and children all holding the same rank in the scale of being and were all subjected to the same narrow examination silvery-headed age and sprightly youth maids and matrons had to undergo the same indelicate inspection at this moment i saw more clearly than ever the brutalizing effects of slavery upon both slave and slaveholder after the valuation then came the division i have no language to express the high excitement and deep anxiety which were felt among us poor slaves during this time our fate for life was now to be decided we had no more voice in that decision than the brutes among whom we were ranked a single word from the white men was enough against all our wishes prayers and entreaties to sunder forever the dearest friends dearest kindred and strongest ties known to human beings in addition to the pain of separation there was the horrid dread of falling into the hands of master andrew he was known to us all as being a most cruel wretch a common drunkard who had by his reckless mismanagement and profligate dissipation already wasted a large portion of his father's property we all felt that we might as well be sold at once to the georgia traders as to pass into his hands for we knew that that would be our inevitable condition a condition held by us all in the utmost horror and dread i suffered more anxiety than most of my fellow-slaves i had known what it was to be kindly treated they had known nothing of the kind they had seen little or nothing of the world they were in very deed men and women of sorrow and acquainted with grief their backs had been made familiar with the bloody lash so that they had become callous mine was yet tender for while at baltimore i got few whippings and few slaves could boast of a kinder master and mistress than myself and the thought of passing out of their hands into those of master andrew a man who but a few days before to give me a sample of his bloody disposition took my little brother by the throat threw him to the ground and with the heel of his boot stamped upon his head till the blood gushed from his nose and ears was well calculated to make me anxious as to my fate after he had committed this savage outrage upon my brother he turned to me and said that that was the way he meant to serve me one of these days meaning i suppose when i came into his possession thanks to a kind providence i fell to the portion of mrs lucretia and was sent immediately back to baltimore to live again in the family of master hugh their joy at my return equalled their sorrow at my departure it was a glad day to me I had escaped a worse than lion's jaws. I was absent from Baltimore for the purpose of valuation and division just about one month, and it seemed to have been six. 
very soon after my return to baltimore my mistress lucretia died leaving her husband and one child amanda and in a very short time after her death master andrew died now all the property of my old master slaves included was in the hands of strangers strangers who had had nothing to do with accumulating it not a slave was left free all remained slaves from the youngest to the oldest if any one thing in my experience more than another served to deepen my conviction of the infernal character of slavery and to fill me with unutterable loathing of slaveholders it was their base ingratitude to my poor old grandmother she had served my old master faithfully from youth to old age she had been the source of all his wealth she had peopled his plantation with slaves she had become a great grandmother in his service she had rocked him in infancy attended him in childhood and served him through life and at his death wiped from his icy brow the cold death sweat and closed his eyes forever she was nevertheless left a slave a slave for life a slave in the hands of strangers and in their hands she saw her children her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren divided like so many sheep without being gratified with the small privilege of a single word as to their or her own destiny and to cap the climax of their base ingratitude and fiendish barbarity my grandmother who was now very old having outlived my old master and all his children having seen the beginning and end of all of them and her present owners finding she was of but little value her frame already racked with the pains of old age and complete helplessness fast stealing over her once active limbs they took her to the woods built her a little hut put up a little mud chimney and then made her welcome to the privilege of supporting herself there in perfect loneliness thus virtually turning her out to die if my poor old grandmother now lives she lives to suffer in utter loneliness she lives to remember and mourn over the loss of children the loss of grandchildren and the loss of great-grandchildren they are in the language of the slave's poet whittier gone gone sold and gone to the rice swamp dank and lone where the slave whip ceaseless swings where the noisome insect stings where the fever demon strews poison with the falling dews where the sickly sunbeams glare through the hot and misty air gone gone sold and gone to the rice swamp dank and lone from virginia hills and waters woe is me my stolen daughters the hearth is desolate the children the unconscious children who once sang and danced in her presence are gone she gropes her way in the darkness of age for a drink of water instead of the voices of her children she hears by day the moans of the dove and by night the screams of the hideous owl all is gloom the grave is at her door and now when weighed down by the pains and aches of old age when the head inclines to the feet when the beginning and ending of human existence meet and helpless infancy and painful old age combine together at this time this most needful time the time for the exercise of that tenderness and affection which children only can exercise towards a declining parent my poor old grandmother the devoted mother of twelve children is left all alone in yonder little hut before a few dim embers she stands she sits she staggers she falls she groans she dies and there are none of her children or grandchildren present to wipe from her wrinkled brow the cold sweat of death or to place beneath the sod her fallen remains will not a righteous god visit for these things in about two years after the death of mrs lucretia master thomas married his second wife her name was rowena hamilton she was the eldest daughter of mr william hamilton master now lived in st michael's not long after his marriage a misunderstanding took place between himself and master hugh and as a means of punishing his brother he took me from him to live with himself at st michael's here i underwent another most painful separation it however was not so severe as the one i dreaded at the division of property for during this interval a great change had taken place in master hugh and his once kind and affectionate wife the influence of brandy upon him and of slavery upon her had effected a disastrous change in the characters of both 
so that, as far as they were concerned, I thought I had little to lose by the change. But it was not to them that I was attached. It was to those little Baltimore boys that I felt the strongest attachment. I had received many good lessons from them, and was still receiving them, and the thought of leaving them was painful indeed. I was leaving, too, without the hope of ever being allowed to return. Master Thomas had said he would never let me return again. The barrier betwixt himself and brother he considered impassable. I then had to regret that I did not at least make the attempt to carry out my resolution to run away, for the chances of success are tenfold greater from the city than from the country. I sailed from Baltimore for St. Michael's in the sloop Amanda, Captain Edward Dodson, on my passage I paid particular attention to the direction which the steamboats took to go to Philadelphia. I found, instead of going down on reaching North Point, they went up the bay in a northeasterly direction. I deemed this knowledge of the utmost importance. My determination to run away was again revived. I resolved to wait only so long as the offering of a favorable opportunity. When that came, I was determined to be off." End of chapter 8